adaptations of respiratory systems in aquatic macroinvertebrates. So hey guys, so we all know that humans can't survive while they're underwater, correct? So there are three methods that you can use to survive underwater. So Ethan, what are three methods that you can use to survive underwater? Snorkeling, scuba diving, and holding your breath. All right, so there's also another organism that uses similar methods. We call these insects. So an insect is part of the family of macro invertebrae. And Bella, do you know what a macro invertebrate is? Yes, it's an animal without a backbone. And so no backbone. You can see it without a microscope. All right. So instead of having the backbone, like a fish or an amphibian, insects have something called an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton is an external skeleton that supports and protects an animal's body. All right, so we're gonna talk about a terrestrial insect. Terrestrial insects are insects that live on land. Insects breathe through spiracles, which are small holes in their abdomen. Air enters a spiracle, allowing oxygen to travel along a network of tubes called trachea, which branch into smaller tubes called tracheals, and then reach the cells in the insect's body. The oxygen reaches the cells by muscular contraction of the insect's abdomen. The same network of tubes removes carbon dioxide from the insect's body. This method does not work very well for insects that live in water, so aquatic insects have made special structural and behavioral modifications to the respiratory systems. These modifications prevent them from drowning. So today we're going to go take a look at some insects that live in the water and some adaptations they've made to their bodies to survive. So let's go! Yay! Alright, so that was fun. Yeah. So what did you guys find? Um, I think I found a back swimmer. Aquatic insects such as the back swimmer use a scuba tank style of respiration. Back swimmers can stay underwater for hours at a time by carrying their own air for underwater breathing. On the underside of their abdomen, this organism has two channels of spiracles which are covered by a layer of hydrophobic hairs. These hairs prevent water from entering the spiracles and allow the back swimmer to store air bubbles while immersed from which it removes oxygen. The oxygen is drawn through the spiracles and into the respiratory system. When oxygen stores become low, it must swim back to the surface of the water to replenish the supply. I also think I found a crane fly larva. Some insects, such as the crane fly larva that breathe in water, solely rely on the oxygen that is available in the water. These types are typically found in very fast and very cold water, both which increase the dissolved oxygen levels. A crane fly larva has a soft, flexible external skeleton that simply allows diffusion of gases through the surface of its body. I found a rat tailed maggot. A number of aquatic insects, such as the rat tailed maggot, have their spiracles located at the end of a long tube called a siphon. The opening to this tube is protected by hydrophobic hairs, which prevent water from entering. A rat tailed maggot is able to keep its body underwater while sticking its breathing tube up to the surface to get air. It's just like snorkeling. If the insect needs to dive into the water for some reason, it is able to hold its breath for close to half an hour. I found a mayfly. Numerous aquatic insects, such as the mayfly nymph, especially during their immature stages, have gills similar to fish for obtaining dissolved oxygen. The gills of the mayfly nymph are located along the exterior sides of the abdomen and are continuous with the interior tracheal system. These gills dramatically increase the surface area of their body, allowing them to breathe more efficiently. Fanning movements of the gills creates a current to direct more oxygen towards them. I think I also found a dragonfly nymph. The dragonfly nymph is a really interesting aquatic insect. It has internal gills which are located inside its rectum. These insects have to circulate water in and out of their rectum in order for gas exchange to occur. If you think about it, the dragonfly nymph is actually breathing through its butt. So now that we went out and discovered some of these insects, do you guys have a better understanding of some of these adaptations they've made to survive? Yes. In the water? yes. Okay, great.